Welcome to this video. I'm going to be doing a little bit longer than I normally would because I want to make sure that you get all the information you need to be able to grow and build and grow a leveraged sales organization. This is all about maximizing your time and the money and all the human potential you either have or will have in your business so that you can scale it and grow it and it can do all that without you if you choose to do so. Now, for us, uh, when we go and uh, look at businesses we're going to invest in or look at other businesses we're going to acquire, uh, buy for uh, as, as a part of our expansion strategy for the investments we've already made, we look at uh, how profitable they are. You know, sales are one thing, turnover is one thing, but profitability is another. And for us, the definition of a profitable business is a business that makes money when the business owner or the leader is not around. Okay, so let's just look at some of the ways you can get leverage in business. Now, if you're in a early stage startup, you are going to be leveraging most likely just your skills and your connections. Okay, admittedly, you're gonna have possibly some funding from your friends, families, and that fool's money that people are prepared to throw at you. But most of the time, you're gonna be leveraging your skills. It's most likely one of the reasons you're starting the business. Hopefully, they're tied to some higher purpose. And uh, in order to get the message out there, you're going to go and leverage your own connections. Now, that's if you're an early stage startup. If you're a later stage startup or a more mature company, which is actually more uh, our target market, then you are going to just be able to get some leverage through having systems. And systems are not just technology. They are people, they are technology, they are paper. They are a whole bunch of things. And through uh, hiring in other companies, service providers who do something for you because they have a certain expertise in that area. It's like, you know, you don't necessarily want to go building a website. You get someone else to do it. If you're building the website and it's not, not your core business, then why are you doing that? Okay. Um, next one is you're going to leverage other people's time, skill, and effort, specifically in building a sales team. You're going to want to have a sales team out there selling, even if, you know, you are the founder, you are the, or the business owner, you're the C-level executive, uh, irrespective of the fact that you are, and if you're the leader of the company, especially you are and always will be the number one salesperson in the business in terms of um, you're the go-to person for closing the bigger deals when you're the CEO of the company, for example. Uh, in the beginning stages, you're it, you're selling, you're the one doing the sales. But you're going to build a sales team to get some extra leverage and hire in professional salespeople. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Once you've you've got some runs on the board, you're going to have some achievements, hopefully. You have some case studies, you'll have testimonials, you'll have some PR and some media coverage. And these are things that you're going to also be able to leverage to increase your sales in future. And once you've done all that, you can start looking towards systemized usage of other people's connections. You know, people talk about referral partners. I'm going to talk about referral partners quite a lot through this um, because they are a great way of getting business. When we're talking about other people's connections in terms of referral partners, we're talking about the more systemized, strategic, structured way of bringing um, uh, other people's communities into our business. Okay, These other people's connections, however, these are these the majority of the time are the type of referrals where someone wants to be uh, remunerated for the referral. They want to be incentivized through some monetary reward for bringing the referral to you. Now, in the beginning, with your own connections, these would be these will be referral partners too, and these are the ones we really love. They're the ones that um, they're more strategic. They are uh, their main incentive is to see you grow, and they're not necessarily interested in um, in financial reward or other monetary reward, any sort of monetary reward. Now, it's not because they're the family and friends. Quite often, the best ones are not. They are, in fact, uh, other business associates who want to see you grow and you build a strategic relationship with them. Now, there are a whole bunch of great um, referral systems out there uh, that you can plug into. Uh, we, you know, and I don't mean some sort of affiliate system. I mean people who train you in how to create referrals. We have our own training program around that. If you're interested, then uh, certainly let us know and uh, we'll get you some information, okay? Now, the last one is other people's money. And hey, that's where we, that's one of the two areas where we make our money mostly is by investing in other people's businesses, yeah? So the final way to get leverage is to get someone else's money on board to help you grow and expand beyond where you're currently growing and expanding to. This, however, is also this thing where a lot of people, um, uh, look for investment to be rescued. And I can guarantee you, if you're looking for investment to be rescued, you have an absolute minuscule chance of getting the investment. It's only going to be if someone wants to absolutely rape and pillage you because they believe that you've got something which you just are not, um, not taking full advantage of. 
we're in a situation where you're being you're looking to be rescued by someone to invest in your business, it probably ain't going to happen. But if you've built your business properly and you're looking to get other people's money into your business so that it can actually grow and scale beyond where you've actually already taken it, then uh, keep on listening because we that is exactly where we're at. And that's exactly what we do. Okay, so for example, when we invest in a business, we have 18 key areas that we look at. And of those 18 key areas, there are actually eight of them are directly related to sales. And that's, that's a pretty big number. It's like almost half of the areas that we look at are related to sales, you know, target market, problem solution, all these sorts of things. And um, the reason we do that is because the sales are, quite apart from having a big purpose in the business and all the rest of it, the sales are the lifeblood. The sales are what brings the money in. And if you're not selling, the business is going to gradually uh, and then later on very quickly die. So let's look at the four phases of building a leveraged sales organization. And this is the ideal situation is whatever when they first start out, when they start out as a founder or they buy into a business or you know they join the C-suite. Um, this is what they ideally want to see happen. You know, they, um, they want to grow it um, and they want to have their, their growth sort of basically follow that green arrow going from left to right. But let's just say you look at someone who's starting out and they're founders. Well, really, the, the only leverage they have in the beginning, as I said before, is their skills leverage. Then leverage level two is, oh, sorry, level two, level one is going to be uh, where they implement some systems. Leverage level two is going to be where they get a dedicated sales team. And leverage level four is where they bring their channel partners on board. Okay? That's sort of just to recap what we said earlier. That is the ideal situation. Now let's actually take a look at what really happens in most situations. And we see this so often when we get pitched by people for investment um, and we look at the history of the business, we see that the founders, the owners of the business, you know, when they first went out, they were the invincibles. They went out and they sold like uh, like crazy. They were, they had their skills. They, they were out there selling passionately about you know, what it is or whatever it was they did, whatever the widget was they produced or whatever the service was they provided, they were passionately out there, driven and extremely raw. And they were just kicking goals everywhere. They'll be very authentic in their communication. And this is sort of a typical thing to see. You know, they, they go to their connections that they had and they say, hey, can you help me to help me spread the word to people you know because this is what we do. Um, all too often see this and it's a great, you know, actually there's nothing wrong with this. This is actually the exact thing you should be doing is when you start up a business, you should be out there selling like a mongrel. If you're not, then um, don't expect to make any real money. But it's down to you as the owner, or as the founder to go out and do this. Now, what happens next though, is someone comes along and says, hey, we need to get some systems. You're absolutely right, you do need to get some systems. Systems are a requirement for scaling a business. So however, are continued scales. And what quite often happens is that the owners will say, oh, we're gonna have these systems in place so we can sort of kick back a bit and we're gonna lean on these systems, right? So they get the perception of leverage without really getting leverage. Because quite often, again, what happens is they actually only implement systems in a really sort of basic way right and the systems are under underutilized they don't actually use the full potential of what the systems can do probably because they haven't implemented it properly now what's happening is they're going to be kicking a few goals um but their sales are gradually slow they're putting all their time and effort into systems they're not getting leverage through getting service providers on board to go and do it they're going to try and do it themselves oh we don't need to pay someone to do that we can do it ourselves or indeed they go down a, uh, an outsource route where they they find someone on one of these cheaper sites and they don't realize the amount of time and effort they have to put in to manage them not saying that using these cheaper sites like fiverr and upwork aren't good they can be it's just you have to be sober about the amount of effort that's going to go into managing those resources. Quite, it, it's much better if you can sell enough um, of your product or service to be able to go and afford a quality service provider to go and make these things happen for you. Your systems will get implemented better and you'll be able to focus on what you need to do, selling. It's much better for you to do what you do best and let other people do what they do best in your business um, rather than you trying to do a half-assed job of putting something together and letting your sales slip. So phase three is, you know, um, <clears throat> instead of it actually growing and then getting a sales team aboard, what more often than not happens is uh, they say, oh, well, you know, our sales actually haven't really been going as well. We've got these systems, you know, but they're not really doing what we want them to do. Um, and like Baldrick in Blackadder, if you ever watched the Blackadder series, Baldrick always had a cunning plan. And that cunning plan was 
you know, as I'm sure, even if you didn't watch Blackadder, I'm sure you realize that the cunning plan wasn't really so cunning at all. Um, and the cunning plan usually is, oh, let's go and get some referral partners on board, you know. Uh, well, they've had a good experience with some friends and family and, and other business associates who've referred them in the very beginning. And what we can go and do is we'll build an affiliate system or we'll, you know, we'll get some people who we have uh, a natural relationship, you know, a complementary relationship with to go and uh, help us grow by introducing us to their community and they're thinking oh this is all very strategic but the reality is they're now going and they're now diverting even more attention away from sales previously they were focusing on their systems they and they realize you know in order to get referral partners on board they're going to have to improve their systems as well but that's going to take away again from their sales and they're now going to go and invest their time in all these relationship building things with these strategic people to grow and try and grow their sales and the reality is their sales are actually going down because these referral partners aren't actually invested in you know they say they'll do great things but most of the time the majority of people um are too focused on their business and and, and by this time the business owner is struggling and they're looking for ways to make money and uh, you know just as they're interested in hey what's in it for me I'm interested in making my business grow. They don't really do a great job of selling the referral partner on how collaboration with them will make the referral partner's business grow as well. All they're focused on is, hey, if I push some, put, put some shekels in your pocket for you to put people in my com- you know, in your community into my product or service, then um, you know, would you do it? And they say, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll do that. But they don't really go and do it because a lot of the, pe- a lot of the people you uh, that um, – uh, you'd make that sort of agreement with, um, they, won't necess- you know, they won't necessarily have a collaborative mindset. They may say they do, but there's a big difference between people saying what they do and people doing what they do. And you'll quite often find that people in, in uh, that you go and talk to will be in a similar situation to you. So they're more concerned about their community putting money in their pocket as opposed to their community putting more money, uh, the, the same amount of money in your pocket and them getting a smaller cut of whatever it is. So... <clears throat> um, Again, what's happening here is the business is starting to decline even further. We're getting to a point where it's just becoming not profitable. The bills aren't being paid. They're, indeed, their mounting tax office is probably uh, knocking on the door because you most likely go on and use some of the tax for paying your bills, which is a no-no as well. You know, um, your systems, well, <clears throat> they're all a bit in disarray and haven't really been completed properly. And... Part of the, you know, and you haven't been out selling. Now, the one key factor is you've probably been able to uh, gather from all of this is you haven't, you know, the, the business owner hasn't been selling. They started selling and then they start to get some systems in. They stopped selling as much as they were. And now they're going to divert their attention again to these referral partners who don't sell for them either. And they sell even less. And if you're not selling, if you're not putting, you know, it's a, it's a numbers game to a degree. If you're not putting X number of people in your pipeline every day and having conversations with them and having, you know, really connecting with them, then there is absolutely zero chance of putting them out the other side of your, your sales funnel as a converted client. You know, they're going to come, you know, if you have no prospects coming in, you have no chance of clients coming out. It's not rocket science, you know. Um, because rocket science is actually really easy, as is this. So, the fourth phase is, is you know, um, it's the Houston, we have a problem. Ah, please come and res- rescue us because we have a real problem. And then they start looking for investments. So instead of instead of um, uh, in, you know, investing in salespeople, they've gone and put some money into the systems. They put the money into these referral relationships. At this point, though, quite often the business owner is no longer selling. They're just in panic mode. Right, and they're <clears throat> trying to leverage their systems even more. They're talking to their referral people. They're looking for all sorts of ways, you know. Uh, and the main one of the main things I think is, oh well, if I could just get some more marketing out there, okay, read into that systems. And if I can get an investor on board, then I can actually just grow this. And then they go and look for all sorts of other things like grants and God knows what. But the reality is, the problem lies in the fact that the owners aren't selling. Okay, they aren't out there having sales conversations. For whatever reason, right? Um, <clears throat> their referral partners are inactive. No wonder the referrals partners are inactive. Now, it doesn't matter how much hype you put out there about what you are or aren't doing. If you aren't selling, then how can you expect your referral partners to be selling? Now, if you were kicking goals all over the place, you'd probably find that your referral partners, with the, the ones that will really convert for you, they'll be attracted to you and they'll start selling for you as well. What often happens here is that the business owner becomes really disoriented, really unfocused, and they're just going to clutch the straws, grab onto anything they can um, 
and, and really grab onto anything they can so that they don't have to go and sell, which is the one activity which will actually get them profitable again. Right? And what happens next is, apart from sales declining, is attrition sets in. Right? The reality of attrition, clients have a certain life cycle. They stay with you for a certain period. They have a certain value for the time that they're with you. And it may be that they're you know, with you six months, 12 months, two years, whatever, and that period starts to pass and the clients start to drop off. And oh, look at that. We have nothing in the sales funnel to replace them. Do we wonder why the business is in trouble? And as I said, this is the point where most people think that they are going to get investors on board. One question is, how are you going to turn it around? How do you turn it around? It seems like an impossible task, really, when you're right in the midst of it, when you are deep, deep, deep in the thick of it all, right? It does seem quite impossible. You keep looking around thinking, how can I make money? How can I make money? One way, go and sell. Go and sell more, all right? Um and going and selling more and making and turning this whole thing around really comes down to two things. Are you able to do it? And are you willing to do it? Now, are you able to do it? That's already been answered by the two sources of reference that we have in this. One is theology, one is science. Both of them tell us that everybody is able to do whatever you put into your mind, you are able to do. If you can conceive it, you can achieve it. Okay. Um, whether you're willing to do it, now that is a whole different kettle of fish. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to make this happen? And I can guarantee you that you're able, without a doubt, you are able to do anything you set your mind to do. And I can also guarantee you that my certainty around this will far exceed any doubt that you will ever have. You are most certainly able to do this. So are you willing? Are you willing to do what is necessary to get what you want? Are you willing to go out and do what you need to do, in this case, most likely sell to get what it is you need or what it is you want for this business? And it doesn't really matter if you failed until now. It's only really failure if you give up without giving it a genuine, a really genuine committed effort. You know, not one of these, oh yeah, I'll dip my toe in the water, give it a try sort of thing. No, no. Are you committed to this? Are you 100% accountable for your actions to yourself and to the business? And there's probably a really good point. Most people see themselves as the business. When they get to this point in the, in, in, in business failure, uh, especially, and part of the reason they get there is they see themselves as the business. If you haven't separated yourself from the business in terms of cognitively the way you think about it, then you're most likely going to end up here. You need to separate yourself out and you need to be committed to the business and you need to be committed to yourself to giving it a genuine go. And if you do that, it is only failure if you have, if you give up without doing that. I imagine that you're in business for a reason. Um, and it certainly wasn't just to you know, pay your mortgage or whatever else. You could have got a job to do that. You're in business because you, you, you saw something in yourself and you saw an opportunity to deliver value, hopefully. Hopefully you have some higher purpose about it. Now, if you're, if you're willing, you can still achieve whatever vision is you had in the beginning. You just need some help. So... And the next question is, apart from are you willing to do whatever it takes, is are you willing to accept help? Because that's part of what we do. Now, when we buy a business, for example, I talked about it before about when we invest in a business, but we also buy businesses. We buy businesses for the purpose of uh, our expansion strategy. We invest in the business and our expansion strategy is more than 90% of the time to expand through acquisition, through buying other companies which complement our investment, and we grow it that way in addition to economies of scale, scalability, yada, 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 all that sort of good stuff. The interesting thing is, whereas we have 18 key areas that we look at when we invest in a business, when we buy a business, we have 15 key areas, but here's the thing. Eight of the 15 key areas are directly related to sales, the same as the eight, the exact same eight key areas that are directly related to sales when we invest in the business. And if you'd like some more information about that, then please just leave us a message and uh, and we'll get you some information about how we, how we go about um, buying businesses and what we look for when a business is for sale. So let's just remind ourselves where the where the business owner is, you know, they're in this uh, Houston, we have a problem thing. They're not selling. The referral partners are inactive. They're all over the place. They're unfocused. And they're just going to grasp at anything they can get. Sales have gone into the seller and clients are starting to drop off. Okay. That's, that's the point where most people get to. 
but you can turn this around and the recovery starts here. The recovery starts by owners getting out and selling. I know I've been harping on about this. I've been pounding the idea that owners should be out there selling all the time. And I will get to a point where you no longer have to do this, but stick with me. First and foremost, if you find yourself in that situation where your sales are declining, clients are starting to drop off, you don't really know what to do anymore, um, and and uh, you you uh, you know you've stopped selling effectively, or maybe you're selling a little bit, then the first thing you need to do is get up off your ass, take your finger out of it, and start selling. You need to tidy up your systems. And you need to grow whatever assets you already have. You're going to have some in your system. You have certain assets which nurture your client into the funnel, through the funnel, and out the other end once post-sale. You need to grow those assets as you go. But the first and foremost is you need to start selling. Okay, you need to get out there and have sales conversations, and it can be a numbers game. If your close rate is uh, one in five, um, and um, you know, you need to, uh, then and you have five conversations a day, then you're going to close one a day. It means you're going to close anywhere between 22 and 25 new clients a month, if that's your close rate, okay? If you have warm leads, if you have a good community, a good connection, good connections with people, for example, on LinkedIn, who on LinkedIn can you go to? Can you go on LinkedIn and uh, have uh, meaningful conversations with five people a day to put the, start them into your funnel? And after the first week, perhaps, if you're depending on how long your sales cycle is, if you're having one uh, five conversations, one conversation a day with five different people, and you have a one in one in five close rate by the end of the first week, if you have a one week long sales cycle, you're going to be closing a, day, a person a day on average. Okay, so if your average uh, average uh, uh, service or product is five grand, will be five grand a day. If it's twenty grand, it's twenty grand a day. Whatever it is, you do the maths. It's not hard to do. It is a numbers game in that sense. So. What you're going to do here, though, as well, is you are absolutely going to leave your channel partners, those so-called referral partners, you're going to leave them alone. And you are now going to start to look at what is the profile of the people you want in your sales team. You're not going to go out and find them, but you're going to start to put the profile together if you haven't already. You're going to look at um, you know, what are their values, what are they interested in. You're going to do the same basic profiling of the potential sales team as you would do what your ideal client profile is. Yeah, if that makes sense, if you've never done a client profile, ideal client profile, then that may also be part of your problem. Um, you want to do that in respect of your sales team. Okay. Now, the recovery phase two is you're going to build, you're going to start to improve your system, and you're going to start to build your sales team. Again, the owner is going to continue to sell. The top, the top executive is going to continue to be out there, pounding, um, you know, on the phones, having meetings, whatever. Uh, and actually selling, not just sitting behind their computer and waiting for sales to come in. You're going to improve your systems and you're going to expand the nurture assets you have for putting people in your funnel, nurturing them through the funnel and bring them out the other end of, other end post sale and then bring them back in to another part of the funnel to bring them to a higher level of service. So you keep adding value, adding value, adding value. And again, you are going to leave your channel sales, or sorry, channel partners, referral partners, so-called, you're going to leave them alone. What you will do though is from the money you invest, you, you you bring in the revenue you bring in, you're going to invest in improving your systems and you're going to reinvest it in building a sales team. Whether it's one person at a time or you can afford to bring two people on, depending on how much you've sold, you're going to go and reinvest in your team and build it that way. So phase three is we are now ready to nurture strategic alliances. You're still going to be out there selling. I did promise you at one point you're not going to have to be. Hang in there with me. But right now you're still going to be out there selling and leading your sales team. You're going to build your sales team and expand in them, keep investing in them. You're going to expand the nurture assets even further and improve the system so they're absolutely uh, very schmick and polished um, and adding value every step of the way, both to your staff and to your potential of your prospects and to your clients and to your channels, your referral paths, because now you're going to go and create those strategic alliances, nurture them and find the best ones who will actually start to bring clients into your funnel. Now you have a funnel. Now you have a sales process, which you've created and and actually worked yourself. You know exactly how it's going to go when a uh, a referral partner wants to refer someone. They are going to put them in the side of the funnel, and they're going to you're going to nurture them through and all the way down to being a new customer. Or if they don't become a customer, you're going to use your systems to bring them back into another part of your funnel and then nurture them through until they become a customer. And if they don't become a customer, then you're going to bring them back into another part of your funnel and keep rinsing and repeating until they either drop off or they become a customer. It doesn't matter which one. What matters is that you have the systems to be able to do it and, most importantly, that you have people putting, pe putting 
prospects into your funnel. At this stage, you're going to be having, you're going to have your salespeople putting people in your funnel. You're going to be putting people in your funnel, your systems and your marketing are going to be putting people in your funnel and your strategic alliances with referral partners will be putting people in your funnel. So let's look at growth uh, recovery phase four. This is where you get to remove yourself from the process if you choose. Your sales team is now doing all the heavy lifting. You have phenomenal relationships with your your channel partners. You've expanded your team and your market, um, and you keep your you're going to take your your nurture assets. You know, keep them current, keep adding to them, finding out what needs to be altered, so that your system just keeps on working. Okay, um, this is the point where you can elevate yourself to that uh, working on, not in. And where obviously you should be working on your business throughout as well. Uh, but up until this point, if you found yourself in that really crappy situation where you're looking to be rescued, but no one's going to come and rescue, let's be honest, you know, you're, if you're, you're, um, your business is heading to the red or already in the red, then no investor is going to touch you unless they can see a way of scavenging something that you've created and building from there. So if you found yourself in that situation or on the way towards it, you yes, you need to be working on your business as well, but you certainly need to be working in as I've been illustrating all along. You need to be out there selling, selling, selling. It's the, there's 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 one way to put money into a business. That's sales. Okay. Another way is indeed investment and grants and all the rest of it, but they do not come um in lieu of sales. So we now know that you're well, we've known along, you're able. Question is, what are you willing to do? If your business, if you're either starting out in the business or if you can identify with um, a business at one of the phases we've talked about where your sales are struggling and you can see that you have systems but they're not really working, you have some referral partners not really referring, you'd like to have some people out there doing sales but you can't afford to um, and you take a good look in the mirror and say, yeah, actually I'm not out there selling, not as much as I used to be. Well, the answer is pretty simple, what you really should be doing. The question is, are you willing to do it? All right? Because one day you may want to get an investor on board or you may want to sell this business, okay? And when you do that, when you get a, when you go to get an investor on board or you um, look to sell the business, ideally what you want to do with an investor is you want to maximize the amount of money you get and minimize the amount of equity you have to give away. Or if you're going to sell the business, you want to maximize the amount of money that you're going to get for the for uh, selling the thing lock, stock, and barrel, right? Um, makes sense. So irrespective of whether you're a startup or a more mature company, this is going to hold true. If you want to maximize the return on your business, irrespective of whether it's through investment or through sale, you need to be able to demonstrate that this business can work without you and you can choose to be out of it and it will still be profitable. That is for us definition of profitable business is a business that makes profit is profitable makes profit when you the owner are not around thanks very much for hanging out with us uh, for this period if you'd like any more information about any of the stuff we've talked about whether it's about how to build a, a referral community and real connections whether it's about how to go about selling your business whether it's about how to go and raise capital for your business or if you're just looking for some help in how to grow the business and scale it in the ways we've talked about then please just reach out here wherever you're seeing the video and let's have a conversation. Thanks very much again. This has been Paul Langer. Have a great day.